What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here to another mock draft video for some fantasy basketball content. You guys really enjoyed the first installment of that. And thank you for that. And you guys really had a nice discussion in the comments below. Got over 400 likes. Can we maybe get the same on this video? So yeah, in the last mock draft, I did it on ESPN. This time I'm going to do it on Sleeper. So if you got your fantasy basketball draft coming up, I highly recommend using Sleeper. It's completely free. You might already use it for fantasy football. It's weird. They only have fantasy football, basketball, and League of Legends. So no hockey or baseball. But yeah, you can run mock drafts like super quickly it's kind of like uh fantasy draft wizard if you ever use that um for fantasy football mock drafts i mean that's a, i don't think that outdate my that outdates myself i think other people still use that but yeah for sleeper you could just hop on put many teams it goes through their own projections so it's not like you're gonna have an easy time mock drafting so for this i have a 12 teamer we have our roster right here a couple bench spots uh two utilities a center forward power forward small forward guard uh shooting guard and point guard so yeah i'm gonna be going through this and just kind of recommending who i would take if you are at this point of the draft uh last time i did select i believe third because like top three it's fairly easy um you probably will go Jokic or Giannis, uh some of that type of or like that type of format at one or two and then it's like luca or Embiid at three i prefer luca but you could go Embiid as well and you would not be wrong so i'm gonna make this a challenge i'm gonna go at 12 we're gonna go on the wraparound um so i'm gonna claim that you could see our roster right here you could see the best available players i'm gonna be going with my strategy um what i kind of want to take at these spots i think i might be looking at center early and maybe loading up a little bit on center and these guys that can also be the power forwards like Embiid, strict center but you know what you're getting with Embiid. but like that's why Giannis is so valuable because he could be a forward and a center same with ad you got siakam who could be a small forward power forward center uh but like bam and gobert they're a little bit limited just at the five so yeah if you guys enjoyed these content feel free to drop a thumbs up when the season starts i should be dropping my uh or dropping my fantasy basketball draft so you could be on the lookout for that and yeah let's hop into this right here we have the 12th pick and let's start this draft up so it'll slide or it should be going pretty quickly thanks for okay we could turn that sound off we don't need that so Giannis one Jokic two they could have a little bit of parity here because they have Tatum three is a little bit of a shocker you have Luca four Lamel or Luca five and beat four Lamelo six so they probably don't know really the injury just happened he might still go in the first round don't love that. Harden at 7, LeBron at 8, Ja at 9, Lord at 10, and KD at 11. So there is some great talent for me on the wraparound. And there are two guys that I kind of love. I love Trey Young in fantasy. He's going to get a high usage. He's most likely going to play almost every game. He's, he's on the court a lot, which is huge in fantasy. He's going to get you an elite scorer, elite passer, three-pointers made, an elite free-throw shooter. He might sprinkle in a little bit of steals, solid rebounds from the point guard spot. He, I would probably take, I would probably take him above LaMelo Ball. I was very shocked to see LaMelo, go, uh, LaMelo Ball go 1.6. Now we're on the clock, and I'm thinking I would want to get a big man, like I said. Carl Anthony Towns, I, it's a little bit scary to see how he's going to be with Gobert. If it's minutes are going to stagger, he's not going to play as much with Devo. I don't think that should hurt his scoring output at all. Still think he will be the number one scorer in Minnesota. Don't think he's going to average maybe north of 25. Maybe he'll average around 23, 24 because you think Ant takes that next step. I mean, Gobert, you're probably slotting in like 12 to 14 points. But then again, like they traded away Vanderbilt and Beverly. Those, those guys added up as well, Malik Beasley. But I'm still going to go Carl Anthony Towns here. By far the best center. Um, you could take a flyer on AD. But the injury concerns, and even in fantasy, I, I don't know if I love him. I do think Pascal Siakam's going to have a great year. I just don't think I like him at the wrapper on a 2.1. So I'm going to go Trey Young and Carl Anthony Towns with my first two picks. Absolutely love that. You could even go Sabonis because he's really good in fantasy because he gets you everything. Points, rebounds, assists from your forward spot. But I wanted to lock up a center here because we don't pick for forever. 3.12 is our next selection. A lot of talent is going to be off the board. If you're picking here in the wraparound, don't even look. Just let the talent go. Basically, everybody you want is going to be off the board by the next time you're picking. All right, so we have, um, yeah, Trey Young, Carl Anthony Towns. If we sorted by the best players available, Bradley Beal, I don't know how much he's going to say on the floor. I feel like Bradley Beal could have an injury to him. Kawhi, don't really love him. Evan Mobley, I do like because he's going to play a ton and he's going to give me a little bit of everything. Do I want to rock Evan Mobley this high? I'm not sure. I do like Zach Levine with one of my picks here because if Zach Levine can stay healthy, he's going to be an elite scorer. He's going to give me three pointers. He's going to give me a little bit of rebounds and assists. This might be a little bit of a reach, but I, I think like I wouldn't get him in any other way. And if you want Zach Levine, you got to get him here at the wraparound because he would not make it to 5.12. 
So yeah, I'm going to go with Zach Levine with one of these because that makes this a little bit easier. You can see my roster as follows. I'm looking at Evan Mobley. I'm looking at um, Jimmy Butler. I do like Evan Mobley. Don't get me wrong. I do. So I think this is a little high. Do I think that Donovan Mitchell adding him will hurt his points per game? Maybe. Maybe he's not going to score as much, but he's going to get you blocks. I guess that's something I do need as well. Um, looking to solidify that block category. And he's going to get me that. Because hmm. Robert Williams not really touching him with the injury. And then you really don't see many elite shot blockers here uh, for a little bit. Like not really uh, to like Jared Allen. So uh, I'm going to go Evan Mobile here. It's a little bit um, different for me. Um, last time I said this to myself in a fantasy draft, I took Cam Akers in the third round. Um, it was between him or Travis Etienne. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. You'd rather have Etienne. Um, my fantasy football reference in here, but I, I it was I was also said I should just did Josh Allen. He went on the wraparound, whatever. So I'm gonna go Evan Mobley here, and that is pretty much going to be my first four picks. Trey on Carl Anthony Town, Zach Levine, and Evan Mobley. It's a little bit different. I just kind of stay away from some of those guys. Like Kawhi in the fourth round is fine because it's the fourth round. You can afford to lose your fourth round pick. You just want to make sure you hit on your first round pick. And yeah, so Kawhi is not terrible value there. Jimmy Butler ended up going at the 4.9 spot. Jabari Smith going at 4.11 and it'll be at 4.12. Love the value for DeAndre Aiden at 5.1 and Jared Allen at 5.7. Even McCollum at 5.4, I think is great value as well. As much as I don't love it, Ben Simmons looks kind of valuable with one of these picks. Now, He's not going to get you free throws or three-pointers, but he's somebody that could be a guard and get you um, elite rebound material. I, I just don't know because uh, he was probably the second highest usage guy in Philly. He's going to be the third in Brooklyn. I do like their chance at Giddy because he's going to get a ton of usage. ton of usage. He's going to get you points, rebounds, assists. I don't know if the efficiency is going to be as good, but I don't hate the idea of slotting in Josh Giddy at my guard spot. Uh, Jordan Poole could be another potential guy. I love Tyrese Maxey this year. And if I want him, I got to take him right now. I think Miles Turner could be very valuable for his shot blocking. He's going to be on the floor a ton. But he's also somebody like the Pacers could be in tank mode. And yeah, they could trade Turner. But he could also be sitting out some games as well. I think I'm going to go with Josh Giddy here. In year two, Shea might be injured. He's going to get a ton of run. And he should be improving at least the shooting splits off his rookie season. Mikel Bridges... I don't love that, and I don't really think you should drift for positional needs. So I like Keldon Johnson as well because he's going to get an incredible high usage. I'm big on high usage guys when it comes to fantasy, not like rim protecting centers that you're looking to get you at least shop or block shots or guys that are high in the steel department. But yeah, Keldon Johnson, I, I really love him in fantasy. I'm taking him a ton in leagues, and 6.1 I think is good value. So we have Trey Young, Zach Levine, Josh Giddy, Keldon Johnson, Carl Anthony Towns, and Evan Mobley with our first six picks. The talent is going to drop off a little bit when we're up next. All right, so Russell Westbrook going at 7'10". Another former Laker, D'Angelo Russell goes 7'11". Uh, RJ Barrett at 7'9". Vassell, kind of love that, at 7.7. Carter Jr. at 7.3. And Franz at 7.1. Some of my favorite picks there from the seventh round. Uh, Miles Bridges, not done. Wouldn't try Miles Bridges in any leagues. Who knows? Herb Jones, and, I mean, the steel department, he should be really good. That's just a very deep roster. Hmm. John Collins, though. I feel like I'm just getting pretty good value there with John Collins at 7.12. Kuminga, I don't really want to touch too often. I think Sadiq Bay could have a bounce back here, at least shooting splits wise. I like Cole Anthony a lot because of the injuries to Suggs and Fultz. I think he could be that starting point guard by year's end. Uh, I believe, though, with this pick, I'm going to make it fairly simple to myself. I'm going to go John Collins there, slot him in at the four, can hit a three here and there, going to give me some rebounds, some points um, at a pretty high level. Like, there's a chance he's still a higher points per game guy than DeJounte Murray. Now, if we're looking to maybe get another center, Clint Capello, but I just took John Collins, so I don't really want to do that. A Kung Wu, Isaiah Jackson, I mean, his, he, his value would skyrocket if Miles Turner did end up getting traded. Draymond. Don't really know what's going on there. I do want to maybe snag one more center because we just really have Towns and Mobley that could play at the five. I don't know if John Collins is center. Okay, power forward center. So that's three guys right there. That is pretty huge. Um, I kind of want a fourth, but maybe I take Wiseman a little bit later. Maybe even Isaiah Hardenstein who can maybe take that starting spot. Uh, Andrew Wiggins is down there a little bit. Uh, I believe Jordan Poole was selected 
at one point so i don't think he is going to be still there he is not so i'm going to go with cole anthony somebody i'm super high on i don't know if he would be there for me this might be a little bit of a reach for cole anthony but i'm very big on him in fantasy to being kind of that guy you can take in later rounds if he's like the first guy off the bench i would like that a little bit more so maybe if i had a forward um and another utility but i, I don't think he was going to fall to me uh with my next pick here in the ninth round oh if colin sexton falls to me yes 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 okay colin sexton is a clear pick for me right here he's going to get a ton of volume a ton of or he's gonna have a very high usage rate they traded boyan bogdanovich conley's getting older they're probably gonna move jordan clarkson yeah colin sexton while his splits might not be the best but honestly if he shoots around like even if it's low 40 percent from the field i think he's gonna be a good enough three-point shooter he's gonna get to the line a ton he might even have a career high in scoring just because of how much run he's gonna get it is a rehab year for him which kind of sucks because if it wasn't Boy, his, I would just be taking him at the fifth round every year. But I'm going Colin Sexton here, another guard. I do want to take a forward with my next pick to at least wrap out that starting spot. Um, but at least get some more forward depth. Cameron Johnson, the man they didn't want to put in the Kevin Durant trade. We could look at him there. Jonathan Isaac, don't really want to touch him. Don't know when he's going to be healthy. I mean, it's... And that team, like, isn't what it last was with him there, where he was, like, the most important guy on that team. No. They have Franz Wagner. They have Paul Bancaro. They have other forwards that are more important. Buddy Heald, though. Yes, uh, he's going to might he could be the leading scorer on this Pacers team over maybe Halliburton and then him. I think it'll be a higher scorer than Matherin, than Miles Turner, Isaiah Jackson, Chris Dorte. He is a stud. He's going to give me three pointers made, elite three point percentage, one of the best three point shooters in the league. And I think that is great value right there. Don't know why they wouldn't just slide him into the forward spot because he is a shooting guard slash small forward but it's fine though uh, i do like that bench right now I, I still need to grab another forward so you have james wiseman going right there that is a nice pick i think i should grab maybe a center uh rashawn holmes but he's coming off the bench brandon clark now he could be an early season guy you target brandon clark with uh jaron jackson jr is out if he plays well you, you try to move him right before triple j comes back i would definitely look at doing that gafford claxton's not a terrible idea because he will get a lot of playing time as their starting center bobby portis Brooke Lopez should be healthy. I didn't mind Bagley, but he did just get hurt. Jalen Smith should get a lot of play as well. I think I'm going to take Brandon Clark here because I think he could be a very valuable piece as long as Triple J's out. Yeah, some other guys I would have liked here, like Hardenstein. If James Wiseman fell, that would have definitely been the pick. So I'm going to go Brandon Clark, and then I would like to snag maybe another forward. Barnes, not bad value. Norman Powell, I mean, without Kawhi. I do like Matherin this year. I think by like in the second half, he could be really valuable. I like Larry Markkinen. You know what? I'm a, I don't know if he falls. I'm going to take Larry Markin in here because on Utah, there's a chance all-star break. Jordan Clarkson's gone. Mike Conley's out for the year for some injury. Like, when Benny Yama-itis. And yeah, uh, they're going to give Markin and Sexton a ton of run. So those guys, um, I'm glad to have in fantasy this year. At least late round options. Maybe not guys you want to depend on. I drafted Sexton kind of high, but he's the first man off my bench. So I'm fine with those guys coming off the bench right now. Dylan Brooks, if he stays healthy, is a nice pick here. And DeAndre Hunter could bounce back from a disappointing season last year, both in fantasy and in kind of the NBA. I'm going to take Trey Jones here. Uh, Trey Jones is a sleeper for me in a lot of leagues because the Spurs are going to be bad. He, I think, will be the starting point guard for most of the season unless they love Joshua Primo there, which I don't really think is going to happen. But I like Trey Jones a lot um, this year. Denny of Dia, if there was for some off-ball defense um statistic yeah i would take him but uh i don't mind jeremy Shohan, but i just drafted a spur so i'm gonna go dylan brooks here uh if he stays healthy which is a big if you know what? he's giving me some defense he's gonna give me some three pointers uh i do need to up my steel department right there so that is a nice pick with brandon uh or dylan brooks and then we have one last pick this is somebody you can kind of just take a chance on not sure who i would love talon horton tucker Jaden hardy precious achua is not a bad idea Andre Drummond's usually really good in fantasy, and if Nikola Vucevic ever gets hurt, his value is going to skyrocket. So you know what? That's somebody I'm going to go with my last pick. So yeah, that is my team. Trey Young, Zach Levine, Josh Giddy, Keldon Johnson, John Collins, Brandon Clark, Carl Anthony Towns, Mobley, and Cole Anthony for the starters. And coming off the bench, we have Colin Sexton, Buddy Heald, Lowry Market, and Trey Jones, Dylan Brooks, and Andre Drummond. I actually really like this team in a 12-man league, unless you love any other of these teams here that were drafted just like tell me if like team one was like low-key stacked Cade at 2.12 uh, don't know if I love that Cade has struggled in the preseason but I think he'll be fine throughout the regular season like Triple J at 2.6 might be a little high I don't know if they're taking into account injuries because yeah I don't think Lamelo with that ankle injury would have went 1.6 I don't know how you're taking Lamelo over Trey Young I mean maybe like with Murray there his usage goes down his points go down a tad 
I don't know if I love that uh, that decision at all. Randall at 3.11. Zion at 3.8 I think is very nice value. Very nice value for them there. Kyrie at 3.4 is a nice pick. Jabari Smith at 4.11 seems a little high. Seems a little high. Some guys that went after, I think, like if you're looking at maybe DeAndre Aiden, but he might be a little bit more versatile. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Drop a like if you did enjoy and if you enjoyed this video overall. Like I said, I'll have my fantasy basketball draft when the season starts on the 18th, so be on the lookout for that. I'll have a couple shorts um, as well coming up before that on fantasy basketball content. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.